and welcome to the Fintech Finance Virtual Arena. I'm your host, Doug McKenzie. Today, we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence in finance. I'm joined by two guests right at the heart of the story. We have Mike Gamble, the Director of an Analysis and Design over at TSB Bank, and Ross Watts, the Chief Customer Officer over at Sandstone Technologies. Guys, thank you so much for joining me here today on the Virtual Arena. Uh, how, how are you both doing, Ross? How are you doing? I think you're, you're dialing in from somewhere quite far, right? Yeah, yeah, over here in uh, in Sydney, Australia. Uh, I think I was just sharing with you uh, earlier. We've, we're having our coldest day of the year, so we've got down to uh, yeah, a balmy four degrees here in uh, in the north of Sydney. So um, yeah, warming up for you for the call. Amazing. Well, uh, yeah. With that in mind, then uh, Ross, could you give our, our audience a bit of a, a background to your role at Sandstone and, and Sandstone uh, itself, please? Yeah, sure. So Ross Watts, a Chief Customer Officer. For Sandstone Technology, so I head up our sales, marketing, and partnership functions. Uh, lead teams out of Sydney and leads uh, in the UK. Uh, we serve customers in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and, and a smattering of clients in Asia. I guess from a Sandstone perspective, you're know, serving tier one to four financial institutions in four key areas: so digital banking, digital acquisition, uh, predominantly onboarding. Um, AI and ML, um, mainly in the uh, intelligent document processing space, because our what we're most famous for is uh, LendFast, which is our home lending platform that uh, processes about 20% of all home loans uh, in Australia. So we've got a, a very strong market share, and, and Divas are really, you know, a great AI ML proposition to accompany that. Interesting. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to hear that perspective on on the lending side because that's going to be so pivotal for for financial institutions going into the future, and I think AI is going to play a big role in that. Now, also joining us, we have Mike Gamble, as I said, from TSB. How are you doing, Mike? Yeah, good. Thanks, Doug. Um, less yeah, glamorous Mike. jumpsuit in Essex, but much warmer than uh, Australia weather <laughs> sounds. We're about 25 degrees here, so yeah. yeah. Exactly. You can't beat that. It sounds way better than four degrees. So, Mike, uh, thank you also f for joining us there in Balmy Essex. So, I mean, with, with that in mind, then, could you um, give our audience a bit of background to yourself a bit more and your role at TSB too? Yeah, so um, I work for TSB. We're a kind of a mid-size UK high street bank. Um, circa 5 million customers, big branch network, telephony, but digital is um, um, where we're really kind of focusing at the moment. Um, my role is I head up the analysis and design function. So essentially that means that all change within the bank will start with my team. Um, when we figure out what the best solution is for customers. We do a whole bunch of CX design, customer research. We talk to thousands of customers every year. And like I said, the, the, the aim really for our strategy is um, very um, a lot of emphasis on digital and how we drive that forward, but not forgetting that we are a traditional high street branch and the human element of banking is really key to us and, and how we connect the digital world with the human world is, is, is absolutely front and centre for us. Yeah, and I think that's really hit a nail on the head that I hope that will come out in the conversation is is finding that balance of, of artificial intelligence and still being human. And, and I think we might uncover that one does not mean the the lack of the other or something like that now guys thank you so much for that intro let's let's get stuck in now uh, you know i think it's fair to say that um ross if i come to you with this first then ai is still um still considered science fiction by a lot of the people within the industry and especially also out um when it comes to ai and finance but I think it's become the backbone of millions of businesses worldwide and I think that's been proven. Um, but to kind of lay the backbone for the rest of the conversation, what is AI actually capable of currently in the financial market? I guess, you know, before we get onto the financial market, I guess, you know, the reality with AI is it's become such an important part of our lives. And I think for many of us, we just don't realize how much of a role it plays. I think part of the challenge is there's so much mystery around AI that we we don't focus on where it is making a difference in our everyday lives. And if you just think of, you know, COVID, you know, we've seen AI being used in airports to identify uh, the disease. We've seen it used to track it. And we've also seen it used in, you know, in the medical um, environment when it comes to, you know, tomography for identifying the disease in, in lungs. So, you know, we've, We've seen AI become really important to everyday life. Um, from a financial institution's perspective, um, you know, obviously for us, 
AI is integral to our, our home lending uh, offering. So it's almost impossible to think of um, how much longer the home loan process may be for customers, for those people in processing centers, for the brokers that are re um, referring loans, if you didn't have um, AI, um, you know, intelligently sorting, um, managing those documents in terms of identifying the key uh, phrases, putting them the right way around, making sure that the dates are, are correct and valid, and then sending out notifications um, to accelerate that process. So, you know, for us, you know, AI is uh, pretty much integral in that in that home lending system. And then when we speak to our customers, whether it be from a risk or regulatory perspective, you know, AI is helping them in so many ways meet the obligations that they have to the customers, the regulator, and, and also to their board. Yeah, and I think you've really hit, you know, you've explored a number of different uh, things there and, and how critical it has been to, to, to people's health, but also their financial health by being able to, to access their credit. And, and Mike, I'd like to hear your perspective of this, you know, from, from within the design side of things and, and, and within the bank, you know, uh, Ross has mentioned the, the compliance side of things, but also being able to streamline um, systems as well. So what does that mean on the design side for you? Yeah, well, from a TSB perspective, we see it as a, uh, and, and we're, we're learning fast. And when I say learning, we're working closely with two partners. So we work with a company called Live Person that uh, opens up our, our web chat, for, for a better word, but also IBM. Um, so IBM Watson is at the heart of everything we do. And I think we're, we're a company like TSB, we're, we're experts in servicing customers and banking, but we, we don't, we, we recognize we, we can't be experts in everything when it comes to technology. So partnering up with IBM and LivePerson has been key. Where we see it being very, very beneficial and, and um, as I was mentioned there about uh, COVID and the impact on that in the last kind of 18 months, we use it through our, what we call our TSB Smart Agent. So on our .co.uk service and just recently within our mobile app, we've got a TSB Smart Agent that's available 24-7 for customers. Nice. Um, we, we always talked about it being a service we wanted to offer within the mobile app, but we moved really quickly last year at the start of COVID. Literally, it's the fastest project I've ever worked on. We, we launched a project on a Thursday and went live the following Thursday. <laughs> um, and we've seen over 1.2 million conversations since launching with our customers. Um, so where we see AI being key to that is, you know, we teach the bot um, some, some basic principles of how banking works and how to support our customers and just keep keep building on it. We keep learning, we keep re-educating the bot um, and we keep, we, we lovingly call it TSP Smart Agent, I'll refer to it as TSP Smart Agent. But like I said, it's there 24-7. I think we're probably getting to more detail later in the conversation, but I did mention human banking. For me, the biggest learning we've had is it cannot be just standalone AI. Our AI, um, um, Watson Brain within TSB Smart Agent, is it's very good at identifying when customers are in financial difficulty, as an example, or they're vulnerable. And where they are, we just flip them straight away from talking to a TSB Smart Agent and connect them real time to a human being. And we probably, we send that as the most powerful um, development of how we're learning how to use this channel and this technology going forward. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's really incredible kind of, looking at that that kind of right at the heart of what the customer needs and, and it's really over the last year it's been shown that they need you know people need to have, have contact with their their financial well-being and the people that operate that so you know if i could stick with you mike for my next question um i'm really interested in in seeing how um retail maybe small um small business banking has kind of changed over the last five years and you know we can kind of move away from ai slightly to kind of get a holistic view of it but in your opinion you know what's been the biggest changes and and has ai had an impact on allowing those changes yeah well when, when i think about the biggest changes to retail banking and our um, business population it's probably easier to think about how the broader kind of our lives have changed you know I see my own kids, they've all got mobile phones, but they never talk to anyone on their mobile phones. It's it's all interacting via their thumbs as opposed to talking. In fact, if any of my kids' phones ring, it's almost like panic. They, yeah. they, they, they're not sure what to do. So how people interact with each other and organisations has massively shifted um, in the last few years. 
And what we're definitely seeing at TSB is customers are more inclined to do transactions themselves and want to come to speak to us when they're talking about that interaction. So it's one thing to, you know, we, we see millions of transactions every day around paying bills, moving money. But when you want to speak to somebody about buying a home or restructuring your debt or your financial difficulty or whatever, that's when the interaction part really comes. And I think what we've had to do in retail banking is, is move fast to catch up with that. So again, if I go, I go back to TSP Smart Agent, the core principle of it is a big shift in thinking in retail banking. And what I mean by that is, if I think about our traditional telephony centers, we measure everything on how quick we answer the phone, how quick we resolve the customer's problem, the average handling time, and we see these numbers all the time. But when you talk about things like TSB Smart Agent, a yeah. customer might flip open their phone at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning and say to our TSB Smart Agent, I've just bought a new home. The smart agent will pick up that conversation instantly and start interacting. But a customer might have actually just put their phone down and don't come back to it till three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And they may not even get to the end of the transaction to a Thursday. Okay. But it works seamlessly. You could not do that with a human being because you're not going to have a human being on hold for four days while we're suiting a, uh, a customer's query. But also it's about making sure that um, the, the brain that sits behind it, I talked about IBM Watson, it's got it's forever evolving and we're learning really fast i mean we get the analytics out every day and we're tweaking it every day just to know um better for our customers and you know one of the favorite things i've, I've noticed recently is our tsp smart agent can help a customer change their address for example and even just the way in which a customer starts a conversation is just massive and um, and we have a lot of customers in scotland and we hear customers in scotland saying i'm flitting I never knew that meant I'm moving home, but our TSP Smart Agent recognizes that and will immediately help the customer move, you know, record their new address. So we're forever learning on that kind of AI engine. That's incredible because not a lot of Scots can understand uh, some some level of Scot. So it's brilliant that artificial intelligence can kind of become that that human partner um, 24-7. Now, I think, um, you know, if we were to glean from that, something that's very important that's changed in retail and business banking has been that contact um and you know if i could come to you then ross and and seeing you know mike's kind of laid down how ai has played a role in that but you know how has ai enabled large huge international banks with legacy systems to kind of operate at the same speeds um that you know that mike's been talking about and offer up the same services that that customers need nowadays yeah, I think it's been a, a really interesting journey. I think Mike's analysis of you know where TSB are on the hour journey is very similar to that which we that we hear from you know many of our clients. Like I think the the journey that uh, large organisations are on is that they're really working out where they can uh, extract the benefits from uh, from AI and where that's going to make the biggest difference to them. Now, I've already talked about how that in in from an Australian perspective how that's become integral in the credit underwriting um, um, element. So, you know, from a back, op back office operation perspective, it's become integral in uh, driving efficiency, um, making sure that um, they can manage uh, the headcount within operating centers really easily. I guess when we look at things like KYC and AML, you know, we've—I don't know if you've seen the the, the news from Australia over um, uh, over in the UK, but we've had some of our banks have had some challenges, and there's been some significant fines handed out where processes have been um, have not been followed, and you know, billions of dollars have been sent uh, to operations overseas yeah. in Asia which weren't tracked with appropriate governance. Um, and a lot of the failings that have been established there was that, you know, appropriate uh, technology could have, um, you know, could have established uh, these risks. And, and I think what you're seeing with some of, um, some of this news that's in, in, the, in the system in Australia is that people are looking to AI uh, more and more now to solve for those, solve for those issues. Um, it's recognized that it's almost impossible to handle the amount of data that is um, going through legacy systems from a transactional perspective um, using anything other than AI based solution. So, mm. you know, that's certainly something which, you know, has been brought to the fore by the by the fines received by 
a couple of the major um, financial institutions over here. But you know, I'd be I'd be interested to hear from Mike's perspective how um, AI is, is is benefiting the the majors over in the UK. Yeah, look, it's um, fraud is and money laundering and is is always. I mean, we're, we're in a unique position at TSB when I when I when I think about fraud that we are the only UK bank that has a fraud guarantee that we offer to our customers. Nice. So, regardless of how the customer is impacted by fraud, as long as they're an innocent victim, even if they've been scammed into clicking on a link that that wasn't wasn't um, legit or they. Um, um, have their accounts been taken over? We, we, we have a zero quibble policy and we 100% pay back. Now, what that does mean is we, we pedal really hard to help the customers to avoid being victim of frauds in the first place. Um, so that is an area that we're, uh, we've done a whole ton of work on analytics behind the scene, but we're now moving into how can, again, TSB Smart Agent being my favorite friend is, how can the TSB Smart Agent help a customer at that in, in real time? And, and I think where it becomes interesting is if I we, if we look internally for TSB, I talked about we've got 5 million customers. Um, we've got close to 70% of our customers are digitally engaged. And circa 90% of all of our transactions are done by customers themselves. Now, most of those customers are using our, our mobile channel. So if a customer does see a transaction that doesn't look quite right, that's where they're going to see it within the mobile channel. And for me, the, 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 the trick here is how do we connect the customer's digital world when they first find the problem to the correct channel to actually solve the problem and to, and to raise the concern that it could be fraud. So I don't want customers to see something in the mobile uh, app and then have to log off the mobile app, look up a phone number, ring a phone number, give out, you know, put in an ID, explain to a human being what the problem is. So we're building within our mobile app the ability that not only do you see a smarter level, smarter um, details of what the transaction is, but if it doesn't look quite right, we're connecting straight to the smart agent that will guide you through. If it's innocent, it's innocent and we're sorted. If it's dispute, we're sorted. If it's fraud, we're connecting to the right people. So I think that's where I see the, the benefits more. I, I, I spend most of my time talking about customer experience. That That's what I'm passionate about. And, and I think having AI and, and smart agent and a, and a good mobile app and connecting that ecosystem is just the way forward for me. And even just as another example, working with a company like Live Person, they're challenging our way of thinking. So I give, give an example of something we're, we're playing with at the moment, that if a customer rings into telephony, we can identify they've rung via a mobile and if they're a digital customer. And the smart agent, what we want to be able to do is to pipe up and say, hi, yeah, um, Doug, it's TSP Smart Agent here. I can see you're queuing to speak to somebody, I can help you. And we transfer the call to smart agent on the same device. Now the customer doesn't have to then carry on and wait to speak to a human, but it's that connecting the the physical, the virtual, the AI world all together so it's seamless to the customer, it's kind of where we're thinking. That's an incredible omni-channel platform to be able to yeah. actually reach into the customer and say, hey, look, almost having a you know a, an artificial intelligence officer come in and, and, and talk to someone immediately. I love hearing that. That's absolutely incredible. And it kind of, you know, it, it leads me on to my next question, which was going to be creating a slick customer experience and, and how AI can be at the heart of that before we kind of go back into the uh, the operations side with, with you, Ross. But, you know, Mike, if we could continue that, you know, you've, you've kind of yes. already laid down uh, some incredible kind of positions there. And, and uh, um, you know, is there anything else that AI might be looking at in the future and be critical for, yeah. for that customer experience I, and engagement? Yeah, I think. I think um, number one priority for me is it, it's got to be relevant, useful, not creepy. So yeah, what the last thing we've been doing? Valley. Yeah, every ten minutes trying to convince the customer what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. So I, I can't ever see a time when you know when all this is over and a customer walks in to buy their fifth coffee of the day of TSB Smart Agent saying you can't really afford that coffee. Um, <laughs> why don't you go back to the office and put the kettle on? It, it, it won't be that type of creepy. But where, where I really see it coming to the road, so if you think about, again, the mobile app, we're all, you know, everyone's using mobile technology for all sorts of instances, whether it's ordering your takeaway on a Friday night to checking the football scores to uh, doing your banking. But there is always a risk that you overpopulate and overcomplicate a mobile app. And our mobile app, we're focusing on, on almost two parts to it. Part one is the stuff you do every day is going to be almost like the native build of the app. So you want to pay bills, move money, check your balance. 
pretty much anything else beyond that, we're going to use TSB Smart Agent with the AI engine behind it to be almost like that real-time concierge and, and, and your personal assistant to help you. Now, the reason why we think that's the right way to go is if you imagine, if, if I break down the different customer journeys within a normal retail bank, there's probably around about 100 journeys. So a journey could be, I want to pay a bill, I want to report a fraud, I want to change my address, I want to change my name. But for the vast majority of those journeys, you probably only do 10% on a regular basis. Yeah. So the journeys you do infrequently, if the way we position that with our customers is through TSP Smart Agent underpinned by AI, then what happens is customers get used to that as, a, as another way of interacting with the bank for the 90% they do infrequently. So you may not move, you only, may only move once every 10 years. You may only change your name once in a lifetime. You may only luckily be hit by fraud once in a lifetime. But if all of those transactions and interactions are through TSP Smart Agent underpinned by AI, and it just gives us that familiarity that we're not have to, the customer doesn't have to retrain themselves to use all these different aspects. Yeah. The, the other bit for me as well is within um, the, the Watson brain within Smart Agent is we can consider all the different permutations and combinations. You know, so even at the highest level, a customer says, um, you know, if the customer tells us they've just got married. Now, if I walk into a branch and speak to one of our really skilled partners and says, you know, I've just got married, the partner will think straight away, okay, that, that we may well be doing a name change here, could be a change of address, it may be additional um, banking needs, but doing it through a native app of saying, I want to change my address is very functional. What we can do in AI is really kind of embellish and enrich that conversation to say, okay, you got married, congratulations for a start. Right, how can I help you? Are you looking to change your name? I can also change your address. And you have that conversation with technology that almost, you know, very similar to that human interaction. Incredible. Now that would be quite expensive to have to be able to offer that 24 seven with a real human. Um, so Ross, I mean, I'm also really interested because at the end of the day, a bank is, is trying to you know, mitigate risk, obviously trying to you know, make sure that things aren't getting crazy. So how can AI then enable these services that, that, that Mike has been talking about and um, really cut down costs to the bank on, on the operations side, but also on the future side. I mean, I, I think uh, Westpac, um, as you mentioned in your, your previous uh, one, was, was fine, what was 1.3 billion Aussie dollars? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So look, I think when we're talking with our clients, we're, we're often talking about how do we improve the cost to income ratio? So the conversation is less about how do we just cut costs, but all, you know, how do they save to invest? And with, you know, every major bank looking to invest more in, in their technology, they've got to obviously find efficiencies that are going to enable them to do that. So, you know, for us, much of the conversation is about how do you remove low value manual handling processes out of uh, the system? How do you make sure you can speed up the capture of information that's going to provide insights for the business to make decisions uh, more efficiently and with more accuracy? Um, and I think AI plays a really important role in that, in addition to the areas which where Mike has talked about, which are customer facing, where you can obviously use an AI uh, interface to um, to support your customers. So, you know, for me, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, home lending is the space where we really kind of specialize from the AI perspective and, and the uh, efficiencies here are, are numerous within the home lending process. Um, you know, we, we see not only are we able to, um, speed up the time per application in terms of, um, the days to approval, we're also able to increase the number of applications that are handled reduce the amount of rework, reduce the amount, amount of errors. And what you get as a result of that, when you think about cost of income is, you know, you've got a happier customer at the end of the process. You've got a happier introducer, 80% of the market here in Australia is broker introduced. So they love AI. And if you've got happy brokers, you've got someone choosing you over a competitor. And then you've also got happy, you know, um, colleagues. You've got people in the processing sense, people as part of the system that haven't got a customer or a broker breathing down their neck for information because AI is keeping everyone updated, making sure that any gaps in information are being uh, filled and that notifications, et cetera, are sent. And then essentially leaving, as Mike beautifully described, the interaction moments, the great bits between um, 
someone in a pricing center and a customer, the broker and the customer, those moments of truth, the really, you know, the high five moments, those are the interactions that can actually be had between humans uh, because AI is taking care of, uh, of the difficult stuff and at the same time creating a really efficient process. Building on that, I, I couldn't agree more because I, I kind of don't think too much about cost. I think more about if you have a, an efficient end-to-end -end customer journey, the cost kind of looks after itself. So again, a, a real example, a, a, our traditional journey of changing your dress before we put it into TSP Smart Agent would often involve customers writing into us or filling out a form. And the rejection rate could typically be around 50% because the information is not quite right. We have to write back to the customer, we ring the customer uh, to get the right outcome. Since moving to TSP Smart Agent and using the AI engine to kind of manage it, our rejection rate is less than 1%. So that will obviously reduce costs, but yeah, the prime focus of that is a better customer experience. So you get that kind of wow moment for a customer every time. I've asked TSP to do something, it's been done perfectly. What, why am I not happy? A customer doesn't care that we've had to spend time and money on an old model to and fro it. What they care about is the customer experience and the right outcome. So, Mike, I, I don't want to focus on it too much. Ross, Ross has uh, brought up a, you know, a couple of instances of how AI has has affected people and and, and helped people during the pandemic. I'm really interested to kind of see how maybe it's made things easier for for customers to get from the front end to the back end um, of of a, a financial institution when the branches are shut. Yeah, well, I think um, when the pandemic first hit, it was a telling time for all of us and. I really felt that it was our strategy at TSB was part of me thinks that we were lucky and part of us thinks we were geniuses that we were on the verge of just, you know, with, with the AI technology, Watson, live person, but also partnership with Adobe when it comes to digital forms, electronic signatures um, and the Adobe experience platform as well. And pretty much all we did at the start of uh, the pandemic was to accelerate our strategy. So we went from zero digital forms to numerous digital forms, and we've had 750,000 completed out by customers since the start of the, the pandemic, and it's now BAU. And what's interesting about things like digital forms is it's, it's becoming more of a norm. It, you know, we, when we help a customer to, to um, take a payment holiday on their loan because they're, they're out of work or, or whatever else, there's a whole bunch of stuff we did at the start of the pandemic. To enable customers to do it, digitally instantly through some of like Adobe Forms that we weren't the first organizations to present an Adobe form to a customer. You know, Adobe's massive and, and, and you see it across many different industries. So it, again, it's that familiarity of the process. It's not something that's unique to TSB. The offering is unique, but the tool itself was, was, was powerful. So like I said, in a, in, a, in a short period of time, we stood up TSB Smart Agent, we went with the whole suite of Adobe Forms. Our branch network was closed for a while, but opened up quite quickly and has been pretty much open throughout the pandemic. Um, with obviously certain branches being closed if, if we couldn't get enough people in for one reason or another. But we just found that we've almost come to a new norm now. You know, a, a customer pre-pandemic could either log onto their mobile, their web, uh, their, their internet bank, ring us or go into the branch. Now they can do digital forms. Now they can speak to TSP Smart Agent. We just improve that offering. Now, the, the other thing, again, I, I, I keep going on about this, even, even the Adobe forms were only successful because how we plugged them into the human side of it as well. So it's one thing if a customer is taking a three month payment holiday in a mortgage, their personal loan, their credit card, but you know they're gonna to have to speak to a human being to really help them and reassure them through that. And that, that was front and center. That's where our branch network came in. Whether you know we had branch staff working from home um, so they were on telephone lines, you know, in a matter of days, all of our telephony team were working from home as well, but they had all that connectivity together all in one place. And something you picked up earlier, Doug, that just what made it easy for us at TSB is we have a very modern banking platform. So I, we, we're incredibly blessed that we have this modern banking platform and then for everything else, whether it be um, our uh, financial support system or our car system, we just have one platform for you know, one, one platform for cars. One plat we don't have a proliferation of um, a legacy estate to worry about. And our core banking system is a modern banking system. So that's kind of really enabled us to, to move at pace as we move forward on some of this agenda.
Incredible, and yeah, it really does underpin the fact that technology can allow the culture of innovation to kind of of change. And yeah, you know, um, speaking of that, then uh, Ross, you know, looking at how technology can be utilised to to kind of play a critical role for a bank, you know, making sure that the IT department is kind of connected to everyone's vision, you know, how can how can banks ensure that that level of digital transformation is employed across the spectrum of the whole company? Yeah, it's a great question. I was thinking, you know, the, the role of the IT department in banks has changed phenomenally over the last few years. It's almost impossible to think of anyone's role in the bank now not having some sort of interaction point with um with technology been impacted uh, you know, positively by them so i think you know for me when i think about what's so important here you know it does come down to you know capturing feedback and customers um sorry <laughs> capturing feedback and data from your customers and colleagues particularly those that are customer facing um, uh, because they're so important, um, ensuring that uh, and ensuring that everyone's on the same page. And, and I think part of that is a strategy which everyone can see solves for the problems which they face as a, as a user of the technology and that customers are informing them they're having. And, you know, one where everyone can agree that both the solution and the problem it solves for uh, are the right ones to uh, to be focused on. Yeah. Now, yeah, just, just sorry, just sort of. I think picking up on that as well. I think where where technology and specifically AI, I think we're really helping going forward. I, I always think about about 15 years ago when I worked for a previous bank. I remember going out to one of the branches and spending the day there. And I spent the morning in the banking hall, and all the, the whole morning I noticed this one lady sitting behind the counter that was absolutely amazing. She everything a customer asked for, she knew, she knew how it worked, she knew how to support. She pretty much knew every customer as they walked in the door as well. And I was just blown away at how professional this lady was. And then the afternoon I went to sit with her behind the counter. So I pulled up a store and sat just sat over her shoulder. And the first thing I noticed was what the customer couldn't see behind the screen was about 300 post-it notes on the wall of everything she has to remember. Wow. Now I think where technology really comes in and particularly AI is if technology can do that, um, keep, keep the customer, keep the partner and the, and, and the customer on track from a regulatory point of view and everything needs to be asked and then allows the, the member of staff to be engaged on a human level with the customer. I think that's where it wins. And we have, we have a few projects like that we're working on at the moment that let the technology do the hard work, let the human being do that engagement with the customer. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good point, Mike. We see some tension sometimes when we implement our, you know, our Diva solution. Um, into processing centres where um, colleagues that have done things a certain way for a long time don't necessarily want to um, work with the AI solution uh, and almost um, that cultural change for them is one where we have to talk about those benefits to the customer because whilst they might might not be they might be fearful of what the impact of ai may be for them personally maybe with regards to their role what what um these banking colleagues are very passionate about is helping customers so they, you know being a, a aware and bought into those benefits that ai will bring and then highlighting what this will enable them to do uh, for the customer becomes absolutely critical in making sure that you're not just providing a great solution but you've actually got the buy-in of the colleagues that are going to be working with it so that it can be implemented really seamlessly because you know one of the critical elements that we find is that being able to implement this solution really effectively into the people that are going to use it or interface with it is absolutely critical yeah and i i think that's that's really kind of hit the nail on the head there in terms of you know finding that balance um, between the human contact and and also the artificial, you know, the artificial intelligence carrying the the heavy work, but allowing the, the the human customer side to really flourish without having that that kind of burden. Now, guys, this uh, as we brought up at the beginning of of the panel session, this session kind of um, spans the globe. I'm really interested to hear um, from both your perspectives. Um, on how AI has been used in finance around the world in a particular region. Um, and you know, if it's been used it, you know, it, more so in a particular way, I don't know if that's too much of a top-down question, but I don't know if there's any kind of anecdotes 
that you've seen, Ross, if I, if I could kick off with you over in Australia, you know, how have you seen the financial um, institutions really kind of look to AI? Has, it, has the wake up call been these giant AML uh, kind of uh, fines? Has that been the final wake up? I think it, I think it definitely has um, from a risk and regulation perspective. But, you know, if I read, if I open the paper at the moment, the, the, the financial review over here, or I look even on the news, you know, the we're obsessed about our, our property over here in Australia. Uh, we've come out of, uh, of COVID quite well, as, as you probably know. And what we've seen is house prices increased by 15% post COVID. There's more home lending applications in the system than at any point in the last 10, 15 years. And uh, many financial institutions are overwhelmed. And there is a lot of talk about, you know, three things. Firstly, the time to approval and why it's so long for some institutions uh, more than others. There's also talk about the stress of um, banking workers working in processing centres because they've got so much pressure on them to help people you know get the property of their dreams and then you've also got that customer pressure you've got auction clearance rates that are high and house prices increasing by the day so you know ai then becomes a really critical component of the home purchasing process and we're seeing those financial institutions that have got ai within their process are able to get an approval to customers but in three to four days and there are some other really big banks over here being um criticized because their approval rate, their approval timelines are about 23 to 24 days. So that's the the quantum of difference. And, you know, if you're at the other end of that, as the person wanting to buy the house of your dreams to your family, you know, that 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 time difference is is unacceptable. And uh, and we're really seeing a lot of focus and scrutiny on that in, in the media and in discussions with, you know, intermediaries associated with the bank. So it's a, it's a very hot topic over here at the moment. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, I mean, I'm hearing from that. My my dream of being able to afford a lovely house in Australia is slipping away. But if I can, it will be a lot quicker when I finally uh, can be able to. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, Ross, you've, you've hit on a, a point that we haven't really discussed. And I don't know if we have time. Hopefully we can kind of fit it in. Um, if I throw to you, Mike, and, and look at how, um, you know, AI is removing a lot of stress on the internal systems as well the internal design you know, you, you mentioned you're looking at um someone at, at one of your colleagues in a branch actually kind of interacting with a customer but how does the the design of ai actually impact um you know your own colleagues working on the in, internal side yeah look, i think um we've definitely seen an impact of when we get a conversation right through csp smart agent you would get a reduction in phone calls or footfalls in the branch which means we can spend more time with customers on those interactions and on transactions, as I mentioned previously. I think um, I think how, how we drive this forward is going to be key. As far as how the technology is and how the technology is growing, I mentioned at the start that you know, we're, we're not a large bank. We know our customers really well, and I like to think we're good at customer experience design, but I'm reliant on my partnership with IBM and Live Person Plus, Cognizant and Infosys. These are the, 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 the teams that rock up and say, Right, we're going to widen your your horizon view here, Mike, and you might want to think differently about this. And but it's always we start and end with the customer. But I think anything we can do that allows customers to interact in their channel of choice. So if I go back to that example of change of address in TSB Smart Agent, if you're a customer that every day you log onto the mobile app, and you pay your bills, you move money, check your balance, and then you do move, and suddenly we're forcing you to go to a channel that you don't normally use. That's not a great experience. Right. But it also takes customer from a channel they don't normally use, uh, from a channel they're familiar with to one they don't normally use, and then have a good experience, but it, it might feel clunky to them because it's the first time they've had to punch in their long card number on, on, on a keypad or explain where they bought their pet food three weeks ago as they're going through ID and D. So by building it in their channel of choice, we are seeing a reduction in phone calls and footfall but then we can reinvest that into some, some more value-add uh, opportunities for our customers. Incredible. So yeah, a, a, a circle that kind of uh, keeps pushing the, the kind of operation side uh, to be more efficient and, and cost efficient. 
Um, so guys, I think we have come to time. Thank you so much for your insights. It's been absolutely fascinating you know, hearing the very you know, customer focus side uh, from, from yourself, Mike, and also Ross, from the kind of operation side and, and how these are, you know, these knock-on effects are impacting every side of the bank. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. And, and it, it's almost a shame that, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is almost considered science fiction because you guys have both put in so much work into making it a reality. And so thank you so much for your insights and also to our viewers as well thank you so much for watching you can catch the rest of the series and much more over at www.fintechf.com and of course YouTube and LinkedIn where I'll see you in the comments guys thank you very much it's been great seeing you and I hope to see you again soon